Welcome to the podcast, Leading and Growing Your Real Estate Business by Coach James Short. This podcast is designed to help you with strategies, insights, and ways to increase sales, build and lead high-performing teams, and ultimately grow your business. Your host, James Short himself, also shares some of his secret sources on how he helps his own clients achieve business growth quickly and easily. James has been coaching those in the real estate and property industry for close to 10 years now, and his clients keep on saying, since working with James, their results have been outstanding, giving them more money, time, and fulfillment. James is offering a free strategy call to those listening to see how he can assist you to take your business to where you want to go. Simply go to jamesshort.com.au forward slash strategy and book in a time today. Now on with the show. Hi and welcome to another edition of Leading and Growing Your Real Estate Business. Coach James Short here again for another episode and we are excited to have a special friend on the show today. Oh my goodness, uh, Dave Gray, extraordinaire. He's a, He's been a a dear friend of mine for a number of years, and he's he's got a list of accomplishments a mile long. Known Dave uh, on a personal front for, for many many years, and uh, he's actually the godfather of my son. So he's a, a dear friend of mine, and and in the business world, the accomplishments has been huge. He's the the CEO of Idle Property Group. He's also the CEO of Elders Real Estate Lifestyle Group on the Mid North Coast, where they've got seven offices and over eighty staff. He's an entrepreneur. He's a property developer. He's done pretty much everything, you name it, within the real estate game. And it's so fortunate that we've got him here today. So, Dave, mate, welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you, mate. What a welcome. Thank you, James. Oh, love it, love it, mate. So, obviously, we've known each other for a little while. And, and, and I want to sort of go back a little bit in history and, and tell the listeners your journey because it's been a colorful journey. And you're, you're the guy that... His work, your work ethic, I've never seen before. I mean, it's absolutely phenomenal. You know, crazy hours, two business, number of businesses all at once. So tell the listeners a, a, a bit about your journey and how you've got to, to where you are today. Yeah, mate. Um, I, well, first of all, started in the money market straight out of school. From that, um, didn't quite fit. So then went into the hospitality world. So I enjoyed both of those worlds. I suppose the, the corporate world and then the hospitality to me, real estate was that. So you, you sort of had the idea of, you know, meeting at a coffee shop and doing deals and meetings. And then on the same stage, then, you know, they had the money side of the money market. So real estate was the perfect fit. It took me a while to get a job. And then I actually worked with the same two brothers, the Burtis brothers for 16 years. Um, any, you know, anyone that knows those two boys would know that's an apprenticeship and a half. <laughs> um, in that, work from commercial through to residential projects, sales, site sales, and they were developers themselves, plus most of our clients were developers. So I always had an interest in development. Uh, I, I probably was more idea based than actually sort of selling mum and dad real estate. So I was always looking for, for my edge. Then moved, saw Cooley uh, as an auctioneer and, and I was so passionate at what he did. I thought he was amazing. I thought I'd give it a crack myself. So went into auctioneering and then of all things bought a pizza shop, which for the hospitality background, he some, made some cash, worked hard, did that while I was still doing real estate, built that from 16 to 35. That cash flowed me into development. I know it's a long story. Cash flowed me into development. That's good. And then uh, spent time uh, in development. Uh, traded the best real estate market, got in and out, got in just before the boom, got out just as it was sort of bursting. Learned so much. So I think what that's given me is a site from actually selling real estate. I've been a client, I've sold, I've built, I've auctioned, I've bought at auction. So no matter what client I sit in front of now, I've been in their shoes at, at some level. So, um, And then I, I felt a bit lost at the end of that. I made a dollar, um, but... It was just a bit of purpose. I'd always wanted to live half in Sydney and half somewhere else. Long story, found Port, bought a little business, loved it. And uh, now I really feel like I'm living, you know, I'm doing what I, I want to do. Yeah. Awesome, mate. Awesome. So, so where, what are you doing now? So give us a snapshot of, of what's, what's on the table at the moment. What are you working on? Where, where the business is at? Yeah, so we bought Port Macquarie Property Management first. And that was 320 managements. That's now at 630. 
Um, that was one business and probably not enough for what I need to do. So we bought Elders Port Macquarie. I then bought Elders Crescent Head and, and renamed that. That was a business. And then there were no synergies. And then I just looked at the area. I was, I was like, well, what have I done? Do I sell it um, or go big? And I thought big. So then Port Macquarie is a hub. Um, there is some good real estate being done up here, but from all my training in Sydney and all these wonderful mentors I had, um, just thought we could do it, do it better. Um, mm -hmm. So then we bought a ring. So to me, you know, I think real estate offices are only going to get so much bigger or they're going to get smaller. I think we're going to see people working out of the back of the car a lot more, or we're going to see this. We're going to see these super offices. So um, from Port Macquarie, we've got Crescent Head. And now we've got a ring around. So we settled our next build business on the 8th and we'll have eight real estate businesses and they're all individually named after the suburbs. I wanted to connect them. I don't want to put my name to it. It's not about me. So we, coast, country, we came up with all sorts of different things, but we called it the Lifestyle Group. And me moving up here, it's a perfect name and living on the mid-north coast, that's exactly what it's about. You know, I'm, I'm lucky enough to live on the water on five minutes to the beach. Um, you know, there's always a spot in a restaurant and it's just a wonderful place to live. So good. So good. And what I love about how you've created it, it is that vision that you've, you know, you've, you've come up with and you presented and you've got massive buy-in with the team, which is, which is phenomenal. And I want to talk about team in a minute, but it's, you, you've created that vision, you've created that purpose and, and people have bought into that and really live and breathe it, which your energy just, it's just phenomenal. So mate, well done, huge, well done. Um, over the time, obviously, there's been some some great ups and downs, and I want to get a little bit personal around what's been some of the challenges that obviously you've got through over your your career that you look back and go, "Wow, that was a, a challenging time." At the time, it may have been everything falling off, but you learned some great lessons. What have been, I guess, one or two challenges that you've come through the other side that you've had some massive learnings from? Uh, mate, I grew up in Hills District, and I, I came to the east, and I was starry eyed. I got caught up in all the bad part of the eastern suburbs that you could possibly do. So I uh, became a party boy. And I think uh, I, I had some limitations in my own belief, in my own confidence. So, you know, I hit that and, and, and lived that life and thought I had to be that person. And I suppose I still struggle with that at some stage, that, that, that party side, you know, work hard, party hard. So that's been a massive um, distraction. In 2009, I also tried to get wealthy real quick. And then when GFC happened, um, then I went through a personal breakup. So party, personal breakup, GFC, mate. Uh, I mean, you were there for me at that time, and, and I owe so much to you at that period of my life. But yeah, mate, that was probably as close to rock bottom as it could. But but I'm, I think you just got to be always open for lessons. So yeah. I think if you got a little bit, you know, if you look at my business life and everything I've got, you got to be a little bit nuts. So unfortunately, it's trying to balance that uh, that fun is also trying to create what I want to create. So, yeah. Awesome. And what have been, if you look back in some of the, some of the big milestones and some of the successes that you, that you've taken away as lessons as well, what have been some of those milestones that you can hang your hat that you're super proud of? Uh, mate, coming up here and creating a life, number, number one, it, it, it is nice. But I think from the business point of view, we've been able to recruit. We recruited the number one out of McGraws up here, the number one out of First National up here. Um, we took a team of four from, from LJ Hooker um, here and we've become an attraction business for, for team members. We've also become an attraction business for other business owners. Other business owners have loved what we're doing. And it's so hard, like I'm so appreciative to look at small business real estate owners because they do everything. They wear every single hat. Yeah. And sometimes my team go, oh, but you're different, Dave. I'm like, yeah, I'm different because I've got operations. I've got an EA. I've got a marketing person. I've got these team of people that, yeah, sure, they can make me look good, but it's not me. It's the fact that I've built a team. So now we've been able to attract that. And that's why we've been able to grow so quickly because people appreciate now we've, we've got a support structure. Yeah. So, mate, I remember years ago I said, mate, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll never be as good as one of my mentors. And you said, well, you don't need to be, mate. You... Just whatever you're not good at, you need to have good people around you. And that lesson, mate, I've got a, you know, in development, I've got the best architect, the best builder, all those type of things. And then real estate, I've gone out and found, you know, the best marketing person, the best EA person. You know, we're always getting trainers up from Sydney or Brisbane and just always getting experts in our business. So you just got to put your hand up and you don't need an answer. Go and find it from someone that knows better than you. And I guess, which sort of segues is so true, so true. I'll segues to the next question in relation to teams. Like, where do you, 
what makes up a successful team and where do you think other business owners fall short of, of that? I think not, not to their fault, but a lot of them are doing two jobs. So a lot of them are the salespeople, the property managers and a business owner. Yep. So mate, that, I don't know how they do that. I take my hat off to them. That is such a hard challenge, number one. I think we've also got to, I think in real estate, we're run by uh, real estate agents. So I know that's common sense, but we, have, we turn into business owners. So I look now at a lot of business mentors from business owners and take my real estate hat off and look at a business owner and try and build a business and not from a real estate agent. So I think that's, that's where we also short for. And I think, you know, the world's changed so much in, we, we've got to be giving to our staff consistently. And I don't think it's financially. I've, I've got one of our team members at the moment that's had a couple of pay rises and now she's completely lost. So it's not about money. It's about making sure you've got vision and purpose for your team. Love it. Love it. And if we go then into then the component of leadership, because I've seen your leadership skills, you know, when I was up there, you know, the other week and, and chatting to the team, what I loved was that you came in and you shared some of that love and, and you didn't want to get into the detail and you go, cool team, hand that over. But your presence, your energy just was, was phenomenal. It was captivating. What do you think makes up a good leader and where do you think other businesses fall short of that as well? Yeah, so number one, you need to find your own style. You need to find out what you are. You, they need to have a buy-in to you for a certain reason. So one, I think they need to know you've got a strong vision in your in your business and, and know where you're heading um, and the purpose. And then you need to be vulnerable. I mean, <laughs> uh, my two old bosses, I'd say, you know, where are you? And you'd say, oh, I'm in Strathfield, and then you'd be sitting behind in the traffic. So <laughs> you know, you've got to be honest with your team. I um, mean, I was supposed to do a video to the team on Friday and I was down at Melbourne um, with the boys and I, I sent a photo of two empty wine glasses and said, I'm having technicality difficulties. You know, it's about being real with your team and, and, and that they, you know, if they're going to trust you enough to have their career with you and work 40 hours a week with you, you've got to give back and, and they've got to know the real you and you've got to be transparent. But I think you've also got to show ability too. You know, you've got to be good at what you do. Yeah. Love it. Love it. Now you've talked about mentors in the past. Who have some, been some of the, the mentors that have helped you and guided you and, and what have you, what's some of the attributes that you've taken from them? Uh, well, mate, you know, it started really my journey with you in 2009 when I was in that bad place. And, you know, when you got me to look through my life and, and look at, you know, family, business, work, finances, and, and I think everyone knows in goal setting and just look where I was at and put a score against it and then just worked at getting that better. And I've used that in the last, you know, 10 years. And sure, sometimes family drops off or health drops off, but if you keep having an active score, I say to the guys, have a really good mirror. Like, I don't give a shit whether you're one out of 10 or you're 10 out of 10, but no, you're a one, if yeah. you're a one. Like, if you're a five and you think you're a seven, you've got a problem. Or if, you th if you're an eight and you think you're only a four, you've got a problem. You need to have that good reality of the lens of, of where you're at. So, mate, I thank you for that. Yeah. Arthur and Napoleon were still the best real estate brains I've ever seen when it came to actually putting a deal together and pitching in the head or, or seed planning as we like to call it and actually taking, you know, you've got to know every client, whether it's the pinch or the cuddle, what do they need? Do they need a pinch or a cuddle? And then sometimes you get it wrong, but then to be able to bring that back. So they were also amazing men. Uh, Jeff Jowett's in our business at the moment and he's fresh and I'm, I'm loving his hindsight. Awesome. I, I look, I could talk about all the mentors in real estate. We all know them, the Tom Pannisters, the Coolies, and all, you know, John McGrath and all these amazing people. I think really now to, to get a really world-class business in 2020, you need to be looking outside of real estate. You, know, you need to be looking at the next thing. We're all getting closer in our ability and we've all got databases, we've all got social media. But like the car industry, you know, if you look at that, mm -hmm. um, how good they are, like they give you the most amazing personal touch but then they follow it with a text and they give you an email. Like every point of communication, they've got you and they've got you back in 12 months and they're selling a $20,000 car. We're selling 600,000, a million dollar real estate and we've only got one touch. Yeah. So I'm looking at industries like that or, and just even when you're watching TV or a movie, you know, whatever it is, you need to be open to what's my lesson. You know, Brene Brown last night I was watching a Netflix and yeah. mate, how good are those lessons? So highly. As, as you would even say, mate, you're just always going to be sharpening your sword. But also, like, mate, I'm, you know, 
I've got so many shortcomings, but it's admitting those and knowing where you're at and, and being open and honest to that and being vulnerable to those and knowing you're not perfect and your team knows you're not perfect, but be honest and have a try, have a go. Love it. Love it. Which sort of segues into the next question in relation to if you were to give say three pieces of advice to those listeners who want to grow their business, what would those three pieces of advice be? Mate, I took no responsibility on my numbers. So, you know, I, I, I always had an idea that, look, you know, if we sold more and we did better, you know, the business would grow. So, um, and that made our turnover was growing and, and say I'd book a trainer in, I'd go, okay, cool, $4,000. No problem compared to my turnover. But when you look that against my profit and my current profit, that was a crap load of money. So it's just those little one percenters in your side, your business with your numbers, you know, getting vendor paid marketing, see if you can make sure uh, you can get a little, you know, if you're selling 250 properties a year and a $200 admin fee, that's $50,000 a year. So it's all these little one percenters. So know your numbers. And even if you're not good at it, it's crap. Take responsibility, know your numbers. Two, you've got to give to your team. Mm. Uh, you're a really give. And it's not about money. I think time's first. Yep. So time, time, vision, but give them something. I mean, we I, I, at least once or once a week, I'm giving a, a little gift voucher to someone just to say, mate, thank you so much for, for what you've done there. So just, just little areas that you, you can give back to your team. Love it. Love it. And so what's on the horizon for you? What's coming up? What are some of your plans over the next, next couple of years? So we've had this huge growth. Uh, which has been really exciting. Now it's just stabilizing it. We are trying to get our values of the business and then the values of the attributes that we team want to go to. We're also trying to get the fact that we've got eight offices in a market that can, you know, we've got you covered and actually get the marketplace. We're trying to connect back with the community and we all say these things, but do we actually do it? And do we actually reach out, you know, like a social media post is not connecting with Port Macquarie, you know, um, giving money to the charity, we've done that in the past. This year is more about let's actually be at the charity. Let's actually, you know, be you have the type of thing. So uh, yeah. it's stabilising that. But it's also, mate, I've always had a vision of a one-stop shop. So we've just started a finance company. Um, from that, we're building a wealth creation. You know, I'm writing a book at the moment because I've got a strong view on property investment. Um, from that, we're also just doing white label our connections. And then we're building ideal property concierge. So we're looking at, you know, help having our own trades. We've got nearly 3,000 management. So, you know, building up. So we're going to try and find trades that don't want to do their social media, their accounts, their bookings, and with our internal management team and also outsourcing. So um, we're looking to have a global business in that sense. But also, the, in the last of that is to look at our businesses you don't work as a receptionist for Port Macquarie or you're not the sales admin for Kempsey. You've got a seat in a business that does a certain amount of transactions and how can we do that and not be stuck to a location? Yeah. Mate, it's next huge. huge. Yeah, so, so hmm. exciting. So exciting. Huge, man. That's some, some amazing stuff coming up. Never, never a dull moment, that's for sure. That's so good. And you can see how it's all like, it's all intertwined. It's all connected. It's all... Like it, it, it's, it's fantastic. So good. So good. So if, if the listeners want to reach out and, and, and maybe connect with you, what's a, what's some ways that they, they can reach out and connect? Yeah. So email me at david at idealpg.com.au or give me a call on the mobile 0410 546 547. Mate, this industry, so I've been given so much. So by all means, happy to take any call to have a chat. Yeah. And, and you always learn something from the person you speak to too. Fantastic, mate. Really appreciate your time, your energy, just the way you think and uh, make the journey and all the lessons along the way. So David Gray, CEO, Ideal Property Group, CEO of Elders Lifestyle Group. Thank you for your time, mate. Really appreciate it. Pleasure, Mr. Short. Thanks, buddy, mate. Loved it. Speak soon. Bye. Cheers.